Wilmington, Delaware. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, Mr. I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying your, uh, <clears throat> your interview here. Uh, wh what I want to ask you is uh, basically two things. One, what in your opinion, just in your opinion, is the, how the government is going to handle the enormous, huge deficit that uh, Social Security and Medicare has uh, to handle uh, in the next, you know, 20, 30, 40 years? Uh, there's a difference of something in the area of 40 to 70 trillion dollars, and we just simply don't have that kind of money. Uh, so how do you think that they will end up handling it? The other thing is a lot of people think that uh, China and Russia are going to be great military powers in the next, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, whatever. And I maintain I don't think that's going to happen because of their population. There are going to be two countries of old people um, because of their uh, birth rates, similar to the situation in France and Italy. But that's uh, what I'd like to ask you about. Mm -hmm. Well, your first question about how the government is going to handle the, um, uh, the growing uh, expenses for Social Security and uh, Medicare in particular, but there are other programs that are, are similar in their uh, future projections. Uh, these are the two big ones. Uh, the, the government will, will not do what it cannot do. <laughs> so what we know for sure right now, there have been a number of careful studies of this matter, and what we know for sure is that uh, the government will not be able to, to make the payments it has promised to make uh, under existing uh, r rules and regulations of the, of the Medicare uh, program and the Social Security program. So we know that it's going to do less. It's not going to provide all the, uh, all the benefits that it's promised to provide. Uh, I think it will do this in a, in, in a number of ways. Uh, first of all, I think the adjustments the government makes will be piecemeal, gradual. Uh, little by little, the government will make changes. It's already moved to some extent in that direction. For example, the uh, retirement age uh, has been raised uh, a little bit for Social Security. Uh, people who were born when I was born uh, cannot retire with full Social Security benefits until they're 66 years old rather than 65 as previously. And then there are further adjustments already programmed to raise the retirement age. This uh, gets government out of some of its uh, uh, spending obligations because each year that you withhold benefits, more and more of those people die before ever receiving any benefits. And that's a fiscally good deal for the government because uh, unlike uh, the situation, if you, if you die and have saved money to take care of yourself in your old age, and you, and you die before retirement, then there's a legacy left to your heirs. But if you, you're expecting a Social Security pension in your old age, and you die, uh, there's no legacy at all. Uh, it's just money the government won't be paying out. So uh, every time the government pushes out the age of eligibility, uh, eligibility it uh, saves itself some money, and I expect it'll push that farther and farther. Each time it does it, it'll, it'll tell us how much healthier we are and how we're living longer, and old, old people don't need to retire at 65 anymore. They should keep working and pay Social Security taxes longer. But uh, that'll be one way to do it. Uh, but there'll be other ways. Uh, for example, what's given with the right hand will be taken back with the left. And that also has already begun to some extent. Some Social Security benefits are taxed uh, for some people. So uh, on income equ e equality grounds, the government will take back from higher income people through taxation some of what it's giving the, gi given them as a Social Security benefits. Uh, similarly for Medicare, which is a much bigger deal uh, fiscally, uh, a government will, will simply withhold benefits. It'll cut back on what it provides. Uh, it can't possibly provide all the kinds of services it's providing to people on Medicare now. So it, it will move further and further in the direction of, of de facto rationing. Uh, and in fact, uh, I, I expect some form of national health care to be implemented uh, in this country within the next few years. I think it's a disastrous development. But a great many people want it, and uh, as H.L. Mencken used to say about democracy, it's the, the theory that uh, the people know what they want and deserve to get it good and hard. 
So I think when the, we have a national health system in this country, people are going to get it good and hard, just the way they've been getting it in uh, Great Britain uh, since World War II, uh, in Canada uh, for a long time now, and in other countries. Uh, the, these kinds of uh, national promises to give everybody gold-plated health care uh, don't work. They don't pan out. And what uh, they do deliver instead, uh, so that the government can stay within its budget constraints, is uh, various forms of rationing care, including, uh, in Great Britain, for example, simply withholding various forms of care from older people on the grounds that they don't have long to live anyhow, so it's not cost effective to uh, use health re uh, resources for them. Uh, let's uh, preserve them uh, to be directed toward the care of younger people. Uh, this kind of, this kind of uh, inhumanity in what purports to be a humane system is, is extremely common, and we can expect to see that in this country too. I would like to say that we, we have the possibility of not going there, of not adopting a national health care system in this country, but I'm just resigned to the fact that, that uh, a great many Americans favor this, they support it politically, and uh, I believe the Obama administration uh, will try hard to move us in that direction, and I won't be surprised if they succeed.